Hello everyone. In this video today, I'm going to talk to you about what are antisense oligonucleotides, what is the mechanism of action of antisense oligonucleotides, and I'm also give you, going to give you an example of uh, an antisense oligonucleotides and how it functions in details. So let's first talk about what are antisense oligonucleotides. Is the name suggests antisense oligonucleotides? NT. So these are actually a 12 to 24 bases in length chemically modified nucleotides, which are single stranded. Okay, antisense oligonucleotides are single stranded chemically modified nucleotides that are 20, 12 to 24 bases in length that bind to their target RNA via Watson and Crick base pairing. Okay, so therefore they are antisense. So this is okay. Let's say this is five prime to three prime and this is our target mRNA, then we will have antisense oligonucleotides which are 3' prime, uh, to 5'. Prime. Therefore, they will be able to bind our target mRNA. Thereby, they will actually inhibit or degrade mRNA production. Okay, so they, they will uh, degrade or inhibit mRNA production. And that actually leads to the degradation or inhibition of target protein synthesis. Okay, target protein synthesis. So, how antisense oligonucleotide function? These oligonucleotides are designed in a way that they are complementary to our target mRNA. So this is our target mRNA. They are complementary to our target mRNA. And when they bind to the target mRNA, they inhibit or degrade the mRNA production. And followed by when mRNA production is inhibited or degraded, that will result, result in inhibition of protein synthesis. So this is the mechanism of action of antisense oligonucleotide. This is one way they can act. The other way uh, these antisense oligonucleotides can act and play uh, the role in mRNA production increment is by inhibiting the microRNAs targeting the mRNA. Okay, I'll give you an example. This is a lot of work. Let's say that this is microRNA, microRNA A. This targets, this targets uh, mRNA let's call it that mRNA mRNA M okay so this micro RNA A it, it inhibits mRNA M okay it targets mRNA M and inhibits its 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 synthesis so then when we we will have antisense oligonucleotide antisense oligonucleotide that is actually targeting micro RNA or inhibiting micro RNA so when this micro RNA A is inhibited the synthesis of mRNA M will be increased okay I hope I was able to make you understand so microRNA A it is inhibiting the uh, mRNA M right microRNA A is inhibiting mRNA M so if we design antisense oligonucleotides in a way that these antisense oligonucleotide target microRNA A and if they target microRNA A that means that a microRNA A is not available to inhibit mRNA M production so therefore the production or the synthesis rather of mRNA M will be increased okay this is another mechanism so this is the same thing I have mentioned here once bound to the target RNA sequence antisense oligonucleotides they regulate the function of target RNA through broad set of mechanisms one way is either they bind to RNA and hinder its function without facilitating RNA degradation such as translation inhibition or modulation of RNA processing. Another way is they promote the degradation of RNA via endogenous enzymes such as RNAH or Argonaut to mediated um, RNA interferons. Okay, uh, the same thing that I mentioned before: antisense oligonucleotide can increase protein production by binding to the sequences in upstream of primary ORF or by antagonizing microRNA. Okay, so microRNAs are inhibiting mRNA production and when these antisense oligonucleotides they antagonize microRNA which will uh, and then actually uh, these microRNAs are normally diminishing protein production but when they are antagonized the protein production will be increased okay so let me also talk uh, briefly about the history of uh, antisense oligonucleotides antisense oligonucleotides were proposed for the first time in the year 1978 Okay, in which the researchers they designed complementary 
There is a complementary oligonucleotide of a short RNA sequence of Rous virus, Rous or Rous sarcoma virus, and so that its replication inhibitory potential in a tissue culture. Okay, so it, the concept was first initiated in 1978, where they designed complementary uh, sequences for R RNA sequence of Rous sarcoma virus, and this they showed that these uh, complementary sequences or antisense oligonucleotides inhibit uh, the replication of this virus in tissue culture. Okay, so I will explain all these mechanisms now in detail uh, using the schematics. So, antisense oligonucleotides, I'm going to take here the example of antisense oligonucleotide enotersen. Okay, this is the name of the antisense oligonucleotide. So, we have antisense oligonucleotide enotersen. So then this, this is conjugated to GALNEC. What is GALNEC? GALNEC is an acetyl d galactosamine okay? So we have this ASO sequence and this is conjugated to GALNEC and now we have GALNEC conjugated antisense oligonucleotide. This is our GALNEC conjugated or antisense oligonucleotide. So this GALNEC conjugated antisense oligonucleotides, what it does, it binds to the receptor that is called ASPGR, acyloglycoprotein receptor, uh, present in the hepatocytes, for example. So it binds to that. So these GALNEC conjugate, it binds to this ASPGR, acylo, uh, ASPGR receptor. And after binding, it gets internalized. So this gets internalized. You see that after binding, it gets internalized. And, and it, 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 it goes inside the endosome. It goes inside the endosome. So it is taken up by the endosome. So in the endosome, what happens is that we have separate GALNEC. The GALNEC gets dissociated from our antisense oligonucleotides. Okay, it gets dissociated. And from the endosome, this is endosome, from the endosome, there, there occurs endosomal escape, the mechanism of which is still uh, poorly understood. So it, it escapes the endosome, so now we have our uh, SARNA outside the endosome. And there are three different mechanisms by which these antisense oligonucleotide could function. One mechanism is that it does splicing, splicing modification. Uh, so that means, so this is our mRNA, and when this, this here happens, the modification of splicing, and that actually inhibits the target protein production. This is our target protein, okay? This is our target protein okay this is our target protein so uh, so then splicing modification causes the inhibition of target prote prote protein production this is one mechanism another mechanism is that we have our antisense oligonucleotide here this antisense oligonucleotide right so normally what happens we have pre messenger RNA right and this pre messenger RNA gets processed post transcriptional modification occurs then we have 5 prime cap and polyethyl added and uh, to our pre-messenger RNA after processing, so it will be uh, without the introns. So then, these uh, processed uh, this mRNA, it, it 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 comes out from the nucleus because this is all happening inside the nucleus. So it comes out from the nucleus. So and what happens is that this our antisense oligonucleotides can inhibit the translation of our target mRNA by causing steric hindrance of ribosome function. As you know that ribosome is needed, okay? Ribosome is needed for protein synthesis. Ribosome is needed for protein synthesis. So our antisense oligonucleotides, what they do, uh, they actually do the steric hindrance of ribosome function, thereby inhibit the translation of our messenger target messenger RNA into protein okay so this is another mechanism steric hindrance of ribosome function so one I already explained splicing modification so it creates splice variant and inhibits the production of target protein and another very important mechanism is the recruitment of the enzyme called RNAs H so what it does these uh, uh, antisense oligonucleotide, they recruit the enzyme, they, that enzyme is called RNase H, and once this enzyme is recruited, what happens is that this enzyme degrades the 
target messenger RNA. As you can see that this here is the degraded uh, mRNA, target mRNA. And when this target mRNA is degraded, then target protein production is reduced or inhibited. Okay, so this here I have shown the structure of N acetyl uh, D galactosamine. Uh, this is used for conjugation of uh, antisense oligonucleotides. All right, so these are the different uh, the different ways by which our antisense oligonucleotides uh, can uh, reduce or diminish the target protein production. So I will give you one example of antisense oligonucleotides that I described just now, enotercin. So this enotercin is a 20 mer antisense oligonucleotide. It was developed by Ionis Pharmaceuticals and Oxia Therapeutics. And this already has been approved for the treatment of hereditary transthyroidine amylodosis. Okay, it has already been approved. So then question is which mRNA it targets, okay? In hereditary transthyroidine amidolosis, so basically it, uh, we have, this is our antisense oligonucleotides. We have here TTR mRNA. So this is, uh, this is uh, transthyroidine amidolosis, okay? So this is our antisense oligonucleotide. Our antisense oligonucleotide enotercin, it targets this TTR mRNA. So then after when, it, so basically this is designed in a way to target this TTR mRNA and when our antisense oligonucleotides bind to TTR mRNA, so this transthyretine mRNA both wild type as well as mutant, okay? It binds to both wild type as well as mutant. Then what happens? Then this TTR mRNA production is inhibited. Yeah, mRNA production is inhibited. So inhibited. So then what will happen? Inhibited slash reduced, degraded, okay? and it will lead to the uh, reduction, okay? It will lead to the reduction of TTR protein, okay? It will lead to the reduction of TTR, transthyretine protein. So, and when this transthyretine protein production is reduced, that is actually useful in hereditary transthyretine amylodosis because increased transthyretine production is the problem in hereditary transthyretine amylodosis. Um, amyloidosis okay so this is the mechanism how it uh, functions so in summary antisense oligonucleotides these antisense oligonucleotides they target the mRNA and thereby lead to the reduction or inhibition of this target mRNA production which ultimately leads to the reduction of target protein production and this can be utilized in the treatment of various diseases I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for your kind 